Hello, hello everybody. It is Melissa hopping on live to you from the Top Drawer RVA. Um, I know I do these impromptu lives. I just kind of jump on and, and show you what I'm doing. I'm not a really good planner. So, you know, if you think that me having a scheduled time during the week would be better for you, um, I can try that. But for me, this is the way I work. Kind of fly by the seat of my pants and do all the things at one time. So I have my new mic hand on. Can you hear me? Hello there. Let me know if you can hear me um, because this is a new, a new added techie thing to my, my lives. I figured adding a microphone might help me explain things to you a little bit better. When my head is turned, you can still hear what I'm saying versus me over projecting. So let me know if you can hear me, number one. That would be great. Number two, I have my little girl hanging out beside the camera. She is going to be reading comments for me. So while I'm working, she can hop on and let me know. So you want to paint your refrigerator slick stick. Yay, and you can hear. Okay, good. We're gonna talk about slick stick, mud, and white lightning right now okay because I've got two pieces over here in my little handy dandy corner and I am getting ready to do some work and this is the perfect time for me to teach you a little bit about proper prep okay all right let's begin first of all I have cleaned both of these pieces with my white lightning white lightning is a TSP based powder okay it's a powder additive that you can add to water how I like to use this is I have an old recycled container. This is just a, a kitchen bleach spray that was empty. Rather than throwing it out, I save the container and I disperse my white lightning, my little powder, into that, into that little sprayer. So this way I don't waste anything. If I put it in a bucket and I use my gloves and my rag and the whole thing, that takes a lot of effort. I'd rather just have it sitting on the floor and be able to grab it, spray it, clean it, and be done. There is one thing you need to know about white lightning, okay? You need to rinse your item off. If you have residual white lightning sitting on your piece of furniture, chances are it could cause a problem where your paint might not stick, okay? And you don't want that happening. So just take a minute. I just used my spray misting bottle filled with water. After I clean my items with paper towel, my spray bottle, I just take my spray misting bottle, give it a little rinse and wipe it down just to make sure I've removed all of that residual product from your white lightning. You don't wanna have this on your piece um, and, and impede any part of the painting process that you're doing, all right? So that is white lightning 101. Any questions for me, little girl? Can you see any hopping up? Nothing yet? All right, feel free to ask because she's my Vanna White over here. She's it is a cute piece it's an auction purchase actually the piece beside it was the auction purchase and when i went to go pick it up the warehouse had so much junk in it i said is all of this for sale she goes well not yet we're so closed i'm like can i shop <laughs> and she said yeah go ahead i was like oh great <laughs> take all my money please so i picked up that little guy because it's so cute and i love to paint a single end table for me this is my favorite kind of project because you can get wild and wacky and do all the things okay Mike says good morning. Good morning. It's Mr. Mike Vito. Is that who that says there? Yeah. Yep. He's a good watcher. He's a big fan. He's always on here supporting and helping. All right. So let me tell you a little bit about this piece. There is a small bit of damage on this piece, okay? Let me see if I can pick it up and show you without hurting myself. Yikes. Okay. So this, as along with the majority of the other wood pieces you get, are veneer okay which means that there's a thin layer of wood on top of your your solid wood piece is it solid wood totally it's solid wood it's probably from the 50s this is a french provincial style i'm good you don't have to hold it <laughs> um but there is a small little piece where sometimes the veneer lifts up and separates from the actual piece normally if you had the piece here you could glue it down and you would be fine but right now there's a small little lip right here that's missing a piece of veneer and this is a very easy fix okay i'm going to show you how to do this all right let's put this back down this is that hurting it's myself a beautiful detail. it is and you know what it's a little bit broken but it's okay because it's broken on the same side one side and the other as long as it's even i'm not going to fix that part it still looks good when you paint it you're not even going to be able to tell and if it wasn't there then you could always add a which I could totally add a wood you bend if it wasn't there. And honestly, if this was broken, um, these little veneer pieces are actually usually nailed on. Um, so if half of it was missing and broken, all you need to do is stick your metal spatula in there, give it a little hammer, the whole thing would pop right off, a light sand, and you're good to go and paint over top. So let's talk about how I'm gonna fix this tiny little problem on the base here. 
Dixie Belle makes a product called Dixie Belle's Mud. I'm sure you've all seen it before. Everybody's used this. It comes in three colors, black, brown, white. Since I'm painting over top of it, it really doesn't matter what color it is. If I was staining, I would probably stick with the brown, but for now, I'm going to take it and fix this little problem. Also, did you know that you're supposed to keep this in the fridge? <laughs> you are. Um, I was finding that my Dixie Belle mud, because I was keeping it in the shed, was getting toasty hot in there and it would grow like little bits of creepy mold. And I was like, why is this happening to my mud? Um, and then I actually read on the side of the can because, you know, read the instructions. It says, refrigerate after opening. So now I keep it in the fridge and I've never, ever, ever had a problem. It doesn't separate, it doesn't get moldy. It's a tiny little container. Nobody's gonna eat it. Put it in the fridge. All right, so your Dixie Bell mud, you can use a spatula or you can use your finger. You know me, I get messy. I just use my finger. So scoop out a little bit of my mud, okay? Where this veneer is missing, I don't need to fill it in perfectly. All I'm gonna do is fill in this tiny little missing piece so that I don't see this broken lip, okay? So I'm just taking my Dixie Belle mud and I'm rubbing it over the edge. The best thing about Dixie Belle mud is that you can sand this stuff back to pretty much nothing. It is such a great powdery consistency when you, when you sand it back that you don't have to worry about um, you know, seeing any marks or seeing any ridges or if you're filling holes in. Um, when you use your mud, it disappears. It's the best thing ever. It's way better than wood filler. I still use wood filler when I do big, big projects. You know, if there's like an entire corner of something missing, I will use mud um, on top of my wood filler. But majority of the time, that little bit of mud right there is good to go. So now it's sitting there. Yes, it's lumpy. Yes, it's bumpy. Does it look pretty? No, does it matter? Totally not. Because you're gonna be able to sand this down when it dries it completely flat. Yep, you're right, completely flat. You won't see anything at all. The next thing you need to know about your Dixie Bell's mud, don't wash that excess down your drain, okay? You don't wanna clog up your drains and your sinks. I just wipe it off with a paper towel, throw this in the garbage, wash my hands as normal, totally fine, okay? All right, so that's two things we've covered. We've covered white lightning and mud. Let's talk a little bit about, I'm gonna take this out so I don't tip it. Let's talk a little bit about slick stick and veneer-like surfaces, shiny-like surfaces. See the front of this, or sorry, the top of this table? This is plastic. Why? I don't know. Um, a lot of these old, old, old tables have a plastic finish on the top. It's just what it was at the time of, of when they used to sell it. I think it was like a good selling point for them to say, hey, this is, you know, no wear and tear is gonna get bad on this. Problem is, how are you gonna paint it? Aaron's it's, watching. Aaron's watching? Well, hello, Aaron. I have my Vanna White in the corner telling me all the deets so I don't have to put my glasses. <laughs> so this is a shiny, shiny laminate surface, all right? You have a couple options here. Don't discount and not buy items to flip based on this plastic from mica finish. There are two things that you can do to this, okay? Number one, you're able to put slick stick on top of it. If you slick stick the entire surface, you don't even need to slick stick the base because it's the base is wood and it's gonna be fine. You can paint right over top of that. I'm talking about this shiny Formica plastic surface that's on the top. You can slick stick this, paint over top of it and walk away and be completely fine, okay? Or you can gel stain, okay? You have two options. Like that's, that's a lot going on right there. You don't have to be scared of this shiny plastic surface. What do I wanna to do today? And this is where I'm gonna bring you all in because I am using slick stick on the piece behind me and I'm gonna show you how. But this little French Provincial Beauty is gonna be painted in a lot of fun. I'm gonna do stripes. I've got a, a partial transfer left over from a job I completed this week. This is the um, Ruby Rose. Yeah, this is the Ruby Rose transfer. It's really pretty, really colorful. It's gonna be going all over the piece. My daughter has picked some colors for me. I picked the golf and um, antebellum blue. Right, and I picked Hurricane Gray and metallic rosé for the drawer front. So, what do you want to learn today? Do you want to learn how I do gel stain? 
on the top of this and then show you slick stick on the other piece? Or should I slick stick the top and paint the entire thing? I'm thinking like I kind of want to gel stain it because things look richer and I can sell for more money when it has a gel stain. Looks like you worked harder and it's really not hard. So slick stick is coming. Let's talk gel stain, okay? It is beautiful. It is a pretty, pretty table. It's got that nice curved edge. All right, let's talk about gel stain because I have it here. I might as well cover all of my bases. And we are using colonial black. We are using colonial black. They come in more colors too. Like they do. espresso and look at it Owens. Lots, but you know what? I like to apply my gel stain like a heavy coverage to cover things, okay? The top of this table, I'll show you again, the top of this table has water stains, scratches, it has discolorations, as well as the fact it's plastic. It's plastic. So let's talk about how we can fix this. Super, super easy. And you guys will be shocked at how easy it is. Can you pass me that tiny piece of sandpaper, Alyssa? Oh, right yes. there. So while I'm sitting here talking to you, I see a tiny, almost like a split in the wood. I'm just gonna sand it flat so that there's no ridge because when I put my gel stain over top, it'll hide the color, but it won't hide that, that bumpy ridge. So I just sanded that area really easily just to make sure. Okay, so this is what I do. And you don't have to sand, but I always like to do this just lightly, just to make sure I'm not missing any junk, like loose veneer and loose pieces of varnish because old loose varnish is flaky. And if you put your gel stain over top of a flake, or a kind of perforated surface, Can it's I gonna be bumpy, okay? So I just give it a light, light, light rub, especially on top of those big scratches, just to make sure there aren't any loose pieces of varnish, okay? That's the only reason I do this. I'm just gonna make sure that I've wiped off all of that dust since I've already cleaned it with white lightning. I don't have to worry about cleaning it again. I'm just getting rid of the dust. All right, quality control girl standing here beside me telling me how I do it. All right, so we are ready to go. Do you have a glove to use for this? I am totally prepared. Look at that. What I don't have over here though is a screwdriver that I might need to open this up. All right, let's stain the top with no paint gel stain. I like dark colors. I like espresso and I like colonial black. Like I said, the reason I like these nice, deep, dark colors is because they come out really pretty and they cover up wood. They do. They cover wood but and they keeps, are pretty. It keeps the detail of it. Sure does. Right Here's what I do. I do wear a glove because this stuff is never coming out of your fingernails. <laughs> Gel stain is hardcore, y'all. If you get it anywhere, I've got it on my curtains, I've got it on my floor, I've got it on my wall. It's really hard to get off. So just wear a glove and don't flick your rag. <laughs> You've got two ways of applying your gel stain. You can use a cut up t-shirt like material, which I do very often because I'm a big recycler. Um, why spend the extra money when you don't have to? I've got scrap rags at home. It's what I'm gonna use. They also sell an applicator pad, which works really great. And I do use that more often on very large surfaces where I want an even stroke all the way across the piece, okay? So my tip and trick of the day is small surface, small area, use your rag. Really big, long surface, use an applicator pad. It will help with, with finish. You have a question? Yeah. What's your question? Could you use a brush? I have seen. Throw away the brush after? Yes, I have seen. So Alyssa just asked, my daughter just asked, can you use a brush to apply your gel stain? You can. Um, I've seen people apply it with a brush and or a foam applicator. They then wipe back. Why add another step? Why waste your time and add another step? It works just as well when you use a soft t-shirt like rag. I like to bend it over so my area is smooth where I'm applying. I'm going to use long, smooth strokes and I'm gonna show you three minutes max to do this entire top. You guys, this is like game changer for furniture. Besides the fact I'm doing this in my house, in my living room, no well, sanding necessary. It's not really a living room. It's the dining room. 
It is the dining room. Thank you again. It's now pink. Room. Quality control over here, correcting me when I'm wrong. All right, so here we go. This is gel stain. No pain gel stain is an oil-based product that I like to apply with a t-shirt like rag. This color is called Colonial Black. It's thick like pudding and it's very easy to apply. And I'm gonna show you how to do it right now and it's super fast, all right? I like to do my edges first. Why? I don't know, I just do. It's my rule of thumb. So I'm gonna turn the little table so you can see and I'm literally wiping on this gel stain. I'm coming around the bottom curve it's okay if it gets on the base. You just wipe it off. I'm going to be painting down there anyways. I do have a, a drop cloth on the floor. <laughs> so you're just wiping it on around the base of this curvy little table, okay? Can, can stain be placed over a painted surface? Painted surface. surface, okay. So she's asking if you can use your gel stain on top of paint. Personally, I have not done that. I have seen other people do it and it works just fine. But I personally have not done that yet. So I think if you had, you, you can, sure you can, if your paint's dry and you've removed your wax. I don't know if I'd wanna put this over top of a wax. Um, but if you have paint dried, I don't see why it wouldn't go on the same as anything else. Like I said, this is plastic. We're gonna make it look like real wood. Okay, so so far all I've done is the edges. I've literally wiped this on. I do like a heavy application, so there will probably be two coats applied to this surface. Um, and in order to apply it to the surface on top of the coat before, it's gonna need to be dry. Since this is an oil-based product, it's gonna take a little longer, which means that it won't be till tomorrow. So all I'm doing is folding my rag over, okay? Dipping it in my gel stain, which is hi, Colonial Nana. Black. Oh, Alyssa says, hi, Nana. <laughs> and I'm wiping this on. I'm going in fluid, even movements, okay, you guys? Left to right, the full surface of this table. And yes, I know it looks streaky right now and it doesn't look perfect. But it's okay. Like this is not a final product, okay? This is my first coat. I'm gonna rub it a little harder where those divots are because I wanna make sure that it's sitting inside of any of the tiny little holes that might be on there or tiny little scratches. I'm just going to wipe this on, smooth it on, direction of the wood grain, right over top of this plastic laminate surface. When this dries and I apply my second coat, it's going to look just like stained wood, okay? It's not hard. You it control. It does smell a tiny bit after a while, but you can always open a window. It does, you know what it smells like to me? It smells like black licorice to me, um, which isn't a terrible smell. It's just a stronger smell. Yeah. So once again, I'm just gonna run over my edges again, just so I have this a nice smooth surface. And that's all I'm gonna do for now. One coat of Colonial Black Gel Stain is going to sit on here and get dry. And it's, then we'll do more. Yeah, it, it's gonna take 24 hours. I'm gonna wait because if it was wood, it would dry faster, but because it's a plastic surface that's non-absorbent, it's going to have to sit here and get dry and it's gonna take a while. So tomorrow morning, probably, um, I'll be able to come back in here and apply my second coat. And what's gonna happen is then, I'm going to have to wait for that second coat to be completely dry before I add my clear coat to the top. So that's your gel stain tutorial 101. Super easy, took me what? Five minutes. When this is dry and I apply that second coat, it's gonna look just like regular wood. It's gonna look super pretty. Here's the next step. Take your glove, flip it inside out. Because like I said, this stuff stains like crazy. And now I can put this in the trash and not get it all over me, which would be wonderful. Because you know, I'm gonna get junk all over me. All right, so. Are we gonna do slick stuff now? Yes, ma'am. Let's move along. So this is gel stain. One coat gets dry. Apply another coat. Paint the base. So pretty. Gonna look so good. We fixed one corner with your Dixie Bells mud which will be dry by the time I um, probably get ready to do my second coat of gel stain. If, you're, if your um, mud is taking a while to dry and you wanna work faster, hit it with heat gun or hair dryer. It'll dry it real fast. All right, so let's talk. about this piece over here? Slick stick, all right? Back it up a tiny bit. This is a really cute little step style table, okay? It's adorable, I got it at the auction. I'm going to steampunk it up. 
for my live on Wednesday. If you guys want to see how cool this piece is going to be, come watch me 3 p.m. EST Dixie Belle Paint Page and this on has Wednesday. Leather on it. Yes, ma'am. All right, so this is leather. This little tabletop was made probably in the 50s. They loved some leather back then. They loved this gold embossed leather. Nine times out of ten, it's fake leather. It's not even real. That, that means this is not a wood surface. Is it sitting on wood? Is this a solid wood table? Yes. But here's the problem. Is your paint going to stick to this leather? This leather is shiny. Who knows what oils were put in this, in this leather? Um, people used to put oil to condition leather and leather tops and any of that residual oil could come right through and your paint's not going to stick. So you're going to be stuck with the surface not working for you besides the fact that it's on the top in this bottom shelf that's where people are going to use your tables the most the tops and the and the you know the tops where people put their drinks down put their books down put their lights you want to make this as durable as possible so let's fix it okay we have cleaned i should say my daughter cleaned it my daughter has cleaned this entire table with white lightning okay white lightning again is a tsp based product really easy to use i put it in a spray bottle Oh gosh, the slick stick. Let me hammer it. Oh, it's getting get stuck. And we, for the slick stick, just use a random old cleaning. That's not for bottle. slick stick. That's for white light. Uh, white light. Right. Okay. So yes. slick stick only comes in one color. Slick stick is only white. Okay. And when I'm talking about slick stick being a amazing gripper for your furniture paint, when you put this on here, you're not getting it off. When I do two even coats of slick stick, waiting two to four hours in between coats, and then 24 hours before I apply my paint, you cannot scratch it off. You can't get it off. It is amazing. It is amazing. By far the most crazy, amazing, sticky thing ever for your paint. So I am going to paint just the two tops where this leather is located on this little table because this entire table will be painted. So. I use a throwaway brush, okay? The reason I use a throwaway brush is because even when washing out your slick stick from your from your regular brush, it's always going to be a little bit in there. It's super sticky. It's hard to it's hard to remove out of a brush. So why would I use my good brushes? I'm not. I'm going to use a throwaway brush. I usually have chip brushes. Yeah, I, don't have those I do not have any left. I'm completely out. I always start with just taking it out of the lid um, because it gets stuck in the lid. And then you have to have remove question. it. You have another question. What's your question? Okay, so if you were to use slick stick on a wood piece and then you decided that you want the wood back, would you be able to sand it off? Yes, ma'am. You know that one time. Okay, I don't know if you can hear because I have a mic on. Let me repeat her question because she's super good at this stuff. Alyssa asked if I put slick stick on a wood item and then changed my mind and I wanted it back to wood, could you get it off? <laughs> Not going to lie. I had a custom piece before that I started and it was a shiny surface so I slick stick the entire piece after I slick stick the entire piece I then remembered that the customer wanted it stained on the top so I had to get out my sander and ended up using um, it wasn't a belt sander but it was a heavy-duty sander it hit that button for me there we go so it was a heavy-duty sander in order to get that slick stick off it was hardcore it was not coming off I did it was it a pain in the butt? Yes. Will I do it ever again? No. It was super hard to get off. So yes, if you accidentally put this on and where you don't want it, back. you can easily do that. You can, you can sand it back, but it's just going to be a pain in the butt. So using my throwaway brush, I'm covering this entire leather surface. Anywhere where this leather is, is getting slick stick over top of it. Okay. I'm going to move this down, running out of room because I'm just using what's in my lid. You don't need a ton of this, you guys. If you haven't used slick stick yet and you're thinking, wow, it's kind of expensive or how much am I gonna use? You don't use this on every project. You only use this on projects that where you need to, where you need to ensure that your paint is going to grip, whether it be plastic, leather, metal, or shiny Anything wood. Fake wood. Anything that looks like it would be shiny and your paint might not stick, it's safe to use this. You don't use a ton. Look, I haven't even dipped in the jar yet, you guys. I'm still using what was on my lid. So, I still kind of keep it even because this is a little thick. You can sand back the ridges once it does dry, if you like. 
Um, they usually don't bother me. They usually self-level enough, but sometimes it's if it's on a bumpier surface, you're gonna see you're gonna see marks. But my plan for this little piece is gonna be industrial steam steampunk. So I'm not worried about that. Are you so, gonna put gear would you bends on it? I am putting gear would you bends on it. So there you go. All I used what what was in my lid, this brush, I will rinse out because I will use it for the second coat of slick stick. Um, do you need to use two coats of the slick stick on your piece? It depends. I have gotten away with one before. Um, but to be safe and ensure on a really weird surface like old fake leather or old real, real leather, I don't know what was on the top of this, if this was real leather or fake leather, I'm going to wait two hours. I'm going to come back. I'm going to apply another even coat of slick stick. I then need to wait 24 hours, which is why I'm doing this now, because this is gonna be for my live tomorrow at three. Um, waiting 24 hours ensures that uh, it, the product is dry and your paint will adhere. So Slick Stick is a preparation product, okay? It's a gripper for shiny surface. It's gonna bond your paint to any surface that's shiny to allow effective painting. Aaron says, will your design hide the layer of leather and gold trim? Well, let me tell you, a lot of the time that gold trim is kind of like a stamp of sorts. This one is not, which leads me to believe that it's fake leather. Um, I can still see a little bit of the alle like that alligator finish that the leather would have, but this, this table is going to be steampunked. So I'm gonna have it multiple shades of green, there's gonna be black, and I'm going to rusty patina it so as well. Will not see it so you're not, see it. you're not going to see it. You're not going to see it. If you were worried about seeing that edge, like the, that embossed edge, you could fill it with mud first, sand it back flat, and then use your slick stick over top. But to be honest with you, I don't think you're going to see it. You might see the tiny little edge where the inset piece of leather is. But that's okay. Doesn't bother me because it's going to become part of the piece. I actually think I might even remove this hardware and add that really cool copper piping hardware um, that Chris Donna, I learned off of her tutorial. Bella Renovere has a b amazing tutorial on how to make your own steampunk hardware out can of copper pipe. Can slick stick be used on glass? Can stick stick, slick stick be used? Say slick stick 10 times fast. That's hard slick work. Slick stick, slick stick, slick stick. <laughs> so can you use it on glass? Yes, you can. Have I done it? No, I have not. Um, I have done it on Formica plastic, metal, and that super shiny Bombay style wood um, that seems impossible to paint because it's so super shiny that you're never gonna be able to get your paint to stick. Um, I have not done it on glass, but can you? Yes, I have actually seen multiple tutorials of people doing that as well, and it is a possibility. So there you go. Today we have covered cleaning with white lightning. We have covered Dixie Belle mud. We've covered gel stain, and we covered slick stick. And now these projects of mine are ready for paint. Once I sand back that slick stick, I have another add, another, add another coat of uh, gel stain on the top and another coat of my slick stick, I'm good to go. And she has another question. What's your question this time? Can you use like stain over top like of the slick stick, like the espresso on top of the slick stick? Or I think that if you really wanted to, her question is, can you put gel stain over top of a slick stick? I think you can. You can do anything with Dixie Belle paint products. I think your coverage would have to be very thick because you're not gonna wanna see the white slick stick underneath. I think a lot of the trick about this really um, gray gel stain, which I'm gonna turn the camera. So, so here you can see this is getting dry. You can still see the striations in the variation of color and it's gonna keep it looking like real wood. Even though this is plastic on the top, not real wood, once I add my two coats of my gel stain, it's going to be completely covered. It's going to look rich. It's going to look real and it's going to look fabulous. So that's it. That's my impromptu hop on live and, and let everybody learn about slick stick and white lightning and gel stain. So any questions? Any questions ask now. Yes, you will ask now or, you know, drop them in the comments or send me a message. I'm always around. And I can always answer questions. She is going to be painting the steampunk on tomorrow on at 3 p.m. on the Dixie Bell Paint page. You are right. She's reminding you all that tomorrow I am live. Dixie Bell Paint page, 3 p.m. We will be working on this cute little step side Set table. Set your alarms. Set your alarms. 
<laughs> and we will be painting this in a fun, mad kind of steampunk. It's going to be great. It's going to be super gorgeous. I'm very excited about this little piece. All right, you guys, that's it. That's it for me. I hope everybody learned something today. Any questions at all, feel free to send them on my way. And if you wanted to shop any of these products, Dixie Bell is still shipping straight to your door. You are, are completely no contact. You don't have to worry about going out. So if you wanted to click that little linkity link above my head, it will take you right over the Dixie Bell paint page. You can shop your products or you can also there find your local retailer and maybe you can go shopping. Maybe your state is getting open because we are getting open around here. We went to Hobby Lobby yesterday for the first time in like months. It was, it felt really, really good. I'm not gonna lie. I love some Hobby Lobby. So anyways, take care everybody. Have a great day. I will be around. Bye.